hello everyone welcome to e triple e lecture number 1 so in this lecture we will first discuss about the syllabus and then we'll go to the actual contents so the name of the subject is elements of electrical and electronics engineering uh, this is my course code so basically we will have 3 hours per week lectures and uh, here the internal assessment will be of 20 marks which will be consisting of 10 marks of ia1 and 10 marks of ia2 and iac exam will be of around uh, 30 marks so ia and iac component together will be of 50 marks and separately there will be an end semester exam of 50 and that's how this 50 and this 50 will become 100 all right so basically this course requires your basic knowledge of uh, basic electrical parameters such as resistance voltage uh, voltage source inductance capacitance frequency power and energy all right so these are my course outcome we have co1 to co5 all right and now we come to the syllabus in module number 1 we will be covering about dc circuits so here we will be studying about the uh, kirchhoff's voltage law current law uh, series parallel star delta transformation mesh nodal analysis all the theorems related to dc circuits like superposition thevenin's norton's and maximum power all right so this module will consist of uh, 90% of numerical 100% of concepts and 10% of theory and the devoted hours are around 12 then we'll move on to this module number 2 which is of uh, uh, you know ac circuits it will deal with uh, the ac definitions and the terminology then the various uh, steady state behavior of ac circuits in uh, terms of pure rc rl rlc series parallel all right and the three phase uh, circuits also will be introduced in this module so this module will be 80% numerical around 20% theory and the number of hours devoted are around 15 so module number 1 and 2 combined will be around half the syllabus then comes module number 3 electrical machines uh, this is a theoretical module so no numerical or derivation are ex expected from this module uh, so we'll talk about transformers its practical construction and its uh, equivalent circuit phasor diagram uh, then we we'll talk about dc motors ac motors and three phase induction motors then module number 4 is about diodes and its application so we'll briefly discuss about pn junction diode theory its application as an rectifier and uh, uh, zener diode as a voltage regulator and led construction and working and its characteristics so this module number 4 uh, will be of uh, around 4 hours and uh, the number of uh, percentage of theory will be 90% and 10% numericals will be can be asked in module number 5 well we have bjt and its applications so we'll study about the bjt basics its construction working characteristics and its application as a voltage amplifier and electronic switch again this is the entirely theoretical module and number of hours devoted are 3 there are some self self learning topics now self learning topics won't be covered in the actual lectures but you have to explore about it in your own time and uh, this will be this will enable you to gain extended knowledge of the topic in depth and uh, this can be included in your ia assessment all right so this is about the syllabus and uh, the books reference books will be as follows so you can refer uh, ravi singh and br patil as the major reference and uh, second module number 2 you can refer it from bl teresa metal and metal and module number 4 you can refer it from donald neiman microelectronic circuit analysis and design so if you cover 3 and 4 3 and third and fourth book it will be covering around more than 80% of the syllabus and uh, rest module number 4 can be covered from donald neiman so this is about the syllabus and uh, uh, the reference books now let's go to the actual topic okay so before going to the actual content let's discuss the some basic things about what is a voltage so voltage the unit is volt okay it's called as voltage or potential difference right it is a measure of electric potential between two points okay so very very important it's a measure of electric potential between two points so how do we define one voltage so one volt is equal to 1 joule per 1 coulomb so basically it means that work required work done uh, for 1 joule of potential energy divided by unit charge and what is electric charge the value for electron that value is 1.6 into 10 to the minus 19 coulomb so 1 volt is simply 1 joule upon 1 coulomb then next comes uh, electric current its unit is amperes 
ओके तो वॉट इज इलेक्ट डेफिनेशन इट इज़ अ रेट ऑफ फ्लो ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स इन अ कंडक्टर और अ सेमी कंडक्टर एंड इट्स डेफिनेशन इज वन एम्पियर इज वन कोलम पर वन सेकेंड ऑल राइट सो दिस इलेक्ट्रिक करंट एंड इलेक्ट्रिक वोल्टेज आर वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट देन कम्स द ओम्स लॉ सो विच रिलेट्स इलेक्ट्रिक करंट विद इलेक्ट्रिक वोल्टेज तो इट सेज दैट अ पोटेंशियल डिफरेंस across any two points on a conductor so uh, yeah potential difference across any two points on a conductor is directly proportional to the current flowing through it provided that the material length cross sectional area and the temperature of the conductor remains constant all right so it means that your voltage potential difference means voltage so this means actually v okay potential difference between me uh, between across any two points means it is voltage let me activate the pen yeah it means voltage voltage across any two points on a conductor is directly proportional to the current okay so v is proportional to i provided these conditions are satisfied that is material length cross sectional area temperature of the conductor remains constant all right so the proportionality constant if you remove you will get v is equal to i r where r is the resistance between the two points of the conductor all right so why this uh, you know ohms law is very important is because if you have a straight line right and if you know only one point of it let's say you know only 5 amperes and 5 volt so you can easily calculate at what value of current uh, at what value of voltage of 10 volt you will get the current what value of current so this can be easily determined by this equation of straight line whose value is y is equal to mx because c is uh, coordinate is uh, y intercept is zero so if you have a resistor over here the voltage across the resistor is v and the current flowing through it from positive to negative is i so that is ohm's law ohm's law is uh, very much important and it will be highly used in uh, this module number 1 now where we cannot use ohm's law it is not applicable to non metallic conductors it's not applicable to non linear devices such as diode vjt mosfet which we'll be studying so this familiar characteristics can you see this is the characteristics of a diode so it's a highly non linear device right so ohms law is not applicable to diode or bjt or mosfet it is true for metal conductors at a constant temperature all right so ohms law will be act, uh, will be valid at constant temperatures for metal conductors now what is the resistance the resistance unit is ohm uh, okay and it's represented by capital r this is the symbol of a resistor kindly note a uh, resistor doesn't have any polarity all right and its value can be from ohms to mega ohms okay or even higher than that so what is the definition formal definition it is the property of a material due to which it opposes the flow of electric current through it so basically it resistance is opposes the flow of electric current so example uh, of uh, you know which materials which offer little resistance or very little opposition to the flow of current are as follows Uh, where all conductors such as metals copper iron offer very little opposition to the flow of current okay so they are good conductors they conduct electricity so their resistance is very less whereas insulators such as glass rubber mica bakelite offer very high resistance in the range of kilo ohms so the current flowing through them is uh, very less but the resistance value they offer a very high resistance value all right so let's say if you have a conductor of length l and cross sectional area a so resistance of the conductor will be proportional to the length of the conductor will proportional to dl inversely proportional to the area of cross sectional of the conductor that is a and it also depends upon the nature of the material and the temperature so uh, resistance of the conductor depends upon these four quantities so if we can write it together r is equal to in, in proportional to l by a so if you remove the proportionality constant we get rho where rho is called as the resistivity of the material so r equal to rho l by a is very very important all right uh, well there are two more terms which is called as a ptc and an ntc ptc stands for positive temperature coefficient so if the resistance of the material increases with temperature it is ptc and ntc stands for negative temperature coefficient if the temperature of the conductor increases with it the resistivity decreases it is ntc type material all right and uh, uh, thermistor is a kind of uh, ntc type material its resistance decreases with increase in temperature so yeah one example was that yeah so next comes electrical power to so power is voltage into current now this is a dc power only ac power will have few more components in it 
and uh, there is something called as next we go to source okay so power has uh, almost two more formulas so i'll write it down so power is v into i it is also i square r it's also third formula is v square by r so there are three formulas for dc power this is all pdc okay one is v into i and the unit is watt okay i square r and v square by r now we go for the sources there are types of what is a source source is a something which supplies energy to the electrical network now source can be a voltage source or a current source so if it is a voltage source is represented by like this it's a voltage source let's say 5 volt is example and it can be a current source a current source can be represented like this a circle inside that arrow let's say 2 ampere so this is a voltage source this is a current source the source is something which supplies energy to the electrical network now it can be divided into two types dependent sources and independent sources well the good news is uh, the independent sources are there in the syllabus but uh, your dependent sources are not there in the syllabus but still for your knowledge there are four types of dependent sources which is voltage control voltage source vccs then current control current source cccs voltage control voltage source which is vcvs and current control voltage source which is ccvs okay so basically uh, it's uh, one of the parameter depend upon the other parameter so that is uh, dependent sources now independent sources will be defined as where the output of the independent sources are not dependent upon any network variable so here it is dependent here it is not dependent now what will be network variable network variable can be voltage or current or it can be time varying so let's consider this example of a typical connection at a home connection uh, at your home typical connection of appliances at home so normally you have this 230 volt ac supply which is a ac source single phase and we have a fuse you have a circuit board where we have a red light where normally the fuse is connected right let's say it's 5 ampere uh, fuse nowadays modern days we use mcv trip okay miniature circuit board uh, because fuse is once it is blown it it should be replaced but mcb miniature circuit breaker can be reused many times so let's say normally typical appliances at home are connected in parallel let's say you have a fan light ac so let's say your uh, light and fan uh, light and ac are off and only fan is on all right and your fan is supposed to take 2 amperes of current now due to a short circuit 4 ampere is flowing through the fan okay so but 4 ampere limit is 2 ampere and 4 ampere is flowing so the fan may get damaged so due to that we keep a fuse of 5 ampere let's say 4 ampere so the fuse will be blown even before uh, the uh, the current reaches the fan over here so flown whenever the fuse blows it it becomes open circuit so the current cannot flow to the other part of the uh, rest of the uh, you know home okay appliances connected to the home to the circuit board so this is my ac source okay this is my ac source and uh, this ac source will generate a sinusoidal signal is a sinusoidal signal and normally its voltage is around 230 to 250 volt and frequency is 50 hertz frequency 50 means time period will be 20 millisecond that means because time period and frequency has inverse relationship so if t is 50 milli uh, 20 millisecond so between for one second 50 cycle flows 50 such cycle flows for one second so that means the frequency is 50 hertz t will be 1 upon f that will be 20 milliseconds all right so this is my how my ac source look like well i have a system where i have to connect a dc source all right so uh, let's say dc source will be constant with respect to time okay now for a dc source the frequency is zero and uh, your the example will be your mobile phone charger the other end will be a dc the mobile battery charger the mobile phone works on dc supply your uh, your laptop works on a dc supply there are many things which works on dc supply so knowing the dc source is represented by uh, let me draw like this this is a dc source or it can be represented by inside a circle plus minus so let's say its value is 1 volt so this is how you represent a dc source all right let's go to the next part next we go to independent voltage sources so this we have drawn a 10 volt voltage source a value will be vs let's say and its its value is constant over time so if we check it today or tomorrow or after one year or after 10 years its value will be 10 volt only 
Now this is an ideal DC voltage source. A practical DC voltage source will have an internal resistance. So this internal resistance will be in series and its value will be very, very small. Okay, so let's say 1.2 volt. Its value is 1.2 uh, uh, ohm. Okay, so uh, whenever the current will flow now, this practical voltage source is connected in a circuit, right? So there will be a current flowing. So whenever a current flows through this RS, there will be a voltage drop created. So some amount of voltage will be dropped across this uh, internal resistance. And due to that, your output is not uh, 10 volt, it will be 9.9 .9 volt, let's say, for example. So the straight line is for ideal and this blue line is for practical. And RS is the internal resistance. So this is my practical voltage source. Next, we go for a DC current source. Current source is represented by a circle and an arrow, right? So its value is constant again with respect to time. This is ideal DC current source. A practical DC current source will have a very high value of resistance in parallel to it, all right? So that current gets split up and a part of 2 ampere goes over here also. Let's say 0 0.01 ampere goes to the zero point, uh, RS register, internal resistance of the current source. So due to that, what happened? The practical curve will be a straight line, but a practical curve, uh, ideal curve will have a straight line, but a practical curve will be 0 0.01 volt less, all right? So this is a practical current source. Now, uh, next time we'll go for resistive network simplification. And let's summarize what we have done today. Uh, we will, uh, we have summarized about voltage source, voltage, current, uh, power, and we have seen about dependent and independent sources. Next time also we'll explore LT spice, a tool which will make our analysis of uh, DC circuits very, very simple. All right. So yeah, that's all for today. Next time we'll continue with resistive networks simplification. Alright, so that's it for today. Thank you all for joining.